What's up everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. In this episode, we are going to be rebuilding Jasem JSNAC portfolio website with HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. And the reason why is that is because uh, we are not going to add all the JavaScript functionality that uh, Jasem JSNAC has added on its own personal portfolio website. The functionality that I'm talking about is the background animation and then the over effect on this text but hopefully in a later tutorial i am going to add this uh, functionality but it is not guaranteed yet because i am still working on it I, I as a programmer of course you will come across uh, some difficult moment whereby you find the difficult you find it difficult to accomplish some tasks and this is the reason why we are not going to add this animation and then the uh, hover effect on this text right here but hopefully like i said in later tutorial we are going to add this functionality if i finally uh, get the right answer to my question but in this tutorial like i said we are going to redesign everything as closely as it is so this is the clone website and this is the original website so if you really want to follow along make sure that you smash the like button and the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so as to get updated because uh, this video is just the part one of how we will actually create a JSON JSON portfolio website all right so with that said let's get started by showing you what we will have in the folder so inside this folder right here we have subfolders and some files so this is the VS code file that we are not going to touch and in this folder we have two CSS files the one this one is the external CSS file and the second one is the uh, font awesome icon that we are going to use on our local computer so this is the uh, link the file to that icon and these are the images that we are going to be using to actually build the website and this is actually uh, this is actually another folder that contains different files and it also has to do with the front awesome icon that we are going to use locally in our computer and this is the index and javascript file and then we have the music that we are going to add uh, in this uh, in this website so right after that let me quickly show you what we will have already in them and like i said this is already uh, the basic html HTML setup that uh, we just have. We have the link to the external CSS file and then the link to the uh, font awesome icon that we are, going to, we are going to use. If you don't really know how to use uh, font awesome locally on your computer, you can head over to uh, fontawesomeicon.com so as to make use of any icon that you really want to use. And with that said, let me really actually show you what we have in our external CSS file. These are the two fonts that we are going to use and then i got rid of the margin the padding and box sizing and i set the uh, background color of the body and then the font family to these uh, values and then inside our javascript file we have nothing okay so what i'm going to do now is to open up our, our browser with live server and you see that everything is empty is blank except the background color and this is all we're going to be looking for us to build this clone page so we can nicely close this out and then we'll be looking at this uh this portfolio website to create new portfolio website so with that said let's get started so the first thing that we really going to have right on this channel let me quickly show you is the the header for example now we have the header the sound and then the navbar which is which i categorized as header and this is the first thing that we're going to have okay so inside the header the first thing that we're going to have is the header so after the header we have a uh, id of uh, sound sound and inside the sound we have audio audio and let's get rid of the um, src and then we set the id of this audio to my audio all right so inside this audio now we'll set our source and then we'll look at 
the file path with this uh, src attribute and the file path is base uh, and then we have our our music that we really want to use so right after this audio we are going to have uh, our you know our icon icon like fas that uh, fa i think sound uh, sound cloud that is the name of the of the class i mean of the icon i really want to give it another another class name of uh, sound uh, sound cloud sound cloud like so so let us actually spell this correctly this is fab not fas if you don't really spell it very well you won't get the real icon that you really want so right after this icon we want to have our span our span with the test of uh, of sound sound and now after that we'll have our our class of uh, on and off so to do that let's say on i think off so inside this we have two span the first one is gonna have an id of uh, off so when you toggle on this off off text is going to uh, switch off the the music and when you click on the on it's going to turn on the music as well so we have another span like i said and then we have an idea of uh, on with text of on like so so right after that we'll have our our ptn container okay we have our ptn container so to do that i'm gonna create a class of ptn container ptn's container so after creating inside this we will have our icon with fes dot fe iphone bars so that is the name of the icon and then create another one with uh, iphone fes dot fe iphone times and what we have to do now is to give it an alternative name of uh, bars so as to target it very well with our JavaScript and then times okay so let's check it out what we have so far so this is what we have so far we have the text on and off and then the two ptns uh double icon that we have right here so like i said they are going to represent this and then the the nav bar all right and the toggle icon right here so the next thing that we have to do is to style them before we actually move to the next step so what we're gonna do right now is by targeting the header so we have the the header so inside the header we are gonna have some styles like uh you know so we are going to set the, the width of the header to be 95 percent and then we'll have to set the height to 10 vh the margin with the auto the margin with the auto we we'll set the display flex uh justify content of the space space between and then we will have our align items to the center and position will be fixed position will be fixed and you know let's check it out so this is what we got right here so the next thing that we have to do now is to style them all right you're going to style them and let's target the sound okay the sound and then we set the padding to seven pixel set the background color Background color to this uh, color 1b 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 and then we set the border radius to 5 pixel and display flex so everything inside it will be aligned side by side align item center and then the color will be white okay the color will be go back 
the color will be white of course so this is what we got right here all right but i think something is missing which we have to check out which is the the sound cloud and so instead of writing sound cloud we wrote sound cloud sound code or whatever so it should be cloud all right cloud like so so if you go back to our code into our browser you see this uh, icon of sound that you're seeing at the top left corner so the next thing that we need to do is to start styling them right so what we want to do is that we want to target the sound cloud the cloud that we created which is located right here sound cloud you can target the class and then you add some styling so the first thing that we're going to add is the font size should be 1.2 rem all right so right after that we set the margin right of the of the sound icon of a seven pixel all right like so and then the color will be f50557 so it doesn't matter which color you use we just want to make sure that uh, everything corresponds exactly to how we did it so this is what we have right here so the next thing is to create some margin from the from the left and to do that let's target the, this uh of id okay we set the color i set the color to this color particularly and let's target the class as well the class of on and off and let's set the cursor to pointer so that the user can you know make sure that it realizes that uh, this thing is clickable so the next thing that we're going to do is to create some margin left margin left of five pixel okay so if we check it out right now you see what we got so far so what we have to do now is to digest the on icon and then we set the display to be none because we don't really want to display that by by default and then we set the color we set the color to this particular color 08 f d d 8 all right so this is the color we got and what we really have to do is to make sure that we properly add margin to the exact place mm. this is on and off not off and on on off yeah I forgot the class name that we added already so as to create the margin from the left and this looks much more better okay so like I said the width 95% and then the margin total okay then the justify content should also be center let's check it out oh my bad let's remove it Let's remove it and let's follow the flow. Now what we have to do now is to style our BTN icon. Okay, we are going to style our BTN icons. So to do that, let's just start just the BTN icon. So we have our BTN container, like so, and then we want to target the icons. So what we have to do now is to set the font size to about. Uh, to rem and, and then we have to set the uh, the padding to about the uh, 10 pixel and then we have our background background color which is this color one eight one eight one eight and then we have the color of the icon which is going to be white and then the colors also will be pointer as well all right so the next thing that we have to do now let's check it out first oh oh btn's container and then i don't know what's going on let's check it out 
Yeah, Philippines, Kong. Oh my god, we completely misspelled it. So we have container like so. And let's check it out and see what we got so far. All right, see what we got so far. And the next thing that we want to do is to hide this particular icon. Okay, so we're going to hide it. And then to, to do that, we're just going to target the BTS container and then the FAS, the end child of two. Okay, that will automatically target the second icon and then we'll send the display to none. So if you go back and check it out, you see that uh, the icon is completely gone. All right, so all we have to do now is to create our sidebar my bad all we have to do now is to create our sidebar all right this sidebar and we'll make sure that it is very responsive responsive uh, on bigger screens and uh, a smaller screens with the uh, length of uh, this uh, viewport all right the size of this viewport and what I really want to uh, mention is that uh, we are not going to do the responsiveness of this website on all devices. We are just going to make the responsiveness of this website on bigger screens like so and on smaller screens with the viewport of this size. Okay. So right after what we've done so far, we are going to create the nav file. So to do that, we are just going to head back to our index.html in Right after this header, we are going to start our sidebar. Sidebar, and the first thing that we're gonna we're gonna create, we're going to create the aside, and then we give it a class of uh, sidebar, like so. Uh, let's add. Uh, let's let's make sure that the name correlates each other. We're going to add a class of aside, and inside this uh, wrapper, we're going to add another class of uh, aside, aside wrapper, and here we create another class of uh, logo section, logo section like so, and inside this logo section, we are going to have uh, two things. The first thing that we're going to have is uh, we're going to have the logo and some text. We have the anchor tag with uh, a value of uh, logo. Yeah, the class of logo rather. The class of uh, logo in the relationship in the, the home because the, when whenever we click on the on the logo, it's going to direct us to the home page in the href okay we'll just add a dead link to it so inside this anchor tag we are going to have the image of the logo all right the image so we are going to locate the uh, the file path and then we'll call it the uh, logo png all right and the alternative name will be logo so right after this image we are going to add span span of uh, Jack, which is the name of the of the website, the creator of this website that we want to clone. And right after this anchor tag, we are going to create another span, which the test of uh, web developer, web developer, like so. So right after this uh, div we are going to have our nav bar okay we are going to have nav bar so do that create a class of uh, nav links so now we are going to name it nav so we want to use semantic html so create, call it nav and inside this nav we will have our anchor tag with uh, the value let's add it that link and then we give it uh, the name of uh, about and what we have to do right after this is to duplicate it multiple times like so 
two, three, four, five. And let's keep the value in it. So the second one will be my, my skills. The third one will be will be will be work. The fourth one is going to be blog. And then the fifth one is going to be contact. Contact like so. So right after this now, we are going to have our social icons. Alright. Let me create a comment. We have our social icons. So right after this, we have UL with uh, the class of uh, social icons. And in here we have our anchor tag with uh, another link. And in here, we are going to pass in our icon that we really want to use. Okay, so the icon will be F A S dot F A B no F A B dot F A I think the first one is the LinkedIn uh LinkedIn like so and then the second icon let's just copy it and duplicate it a few more times all right second and then third so what we are going to right now references uh this okay it references this after creating the the nav links all right so this is what we got so far so what we really want to do now is to rename these uh, icons we want to rename the icons yeah is to rename this icon and this one would be would be for git up git up like so and the top one would be uh, r s s like the feed okay so let's appropriately write the name of the icon that we really want so now if we check it out we realize that uh, we got two icon let's check it out very well and this one is fas not fab so you really have to know the name of the icons that you really want so as to get the appropriate name for your icons so right after that we can start styling uh what we have so far our nav bar. so make sure that it's responsive uh, responsive rather on uh, the bigger screens and on smaller screens for example on bigger screens the nav bar is going to be by the left hand side and then on smaller screens it's going to take up the all week like so and when we finish all this we're going to add the functionality so what we have to do now is to start styling them so the first thing that we have to do is to target the side the outside this class name okay so what we have to do now let's add a comment so say aside section starts here so we have uh, our aside so we are going to set the width of the of our sidebar to about 100 percent we are going to set the height the height to be zero okay but for now let's set it to 100 percent so as to see and when we toggle on the icon right here let me show you so by default the height of this sidebar would be zero and when we never would toggle on this icon we are going to add the uh, the height of 100 percent so as to display the the nav bar on smaller screens but on, from bigger screens the the sidebar is going to be fixed on the left hand side but mind you what we are doing now is that we are creating the mobile device first okay so whenever we finish creating the mobile device first then we add uh we enlarge everything on bigger squares all right so that is what really what we are doing right now so let's set the width to 100 percent and the position will be fixed and then top zero we have left zero as well and then the overflow 
the overflow will be hidden. But for now, we don't really need the overflow, so I'll comment down. And then what we have to do next is to you know set the z index. The z index will be minus one. Or one rather. It's not gonna take any negative a negative uh, sign. So the next thing that we have to do is to target the aside wrapper. Aside aside wrapper, alright? The class name uh the class name that we created right here, which is the aside wrapper. Okay, so we set the the height to 100 viewport height, and then we set the display to flex. We have align items to the center. We have justify content to the space between, of course, and then the flex direction. Flex direction will be called. So let's check what we have so far. At least I decided thing that we have so far. And what we have to do now, since we are creating mobile device first, we are going to nicely arrange everything. So what we have to do now is to target the the logo section. So we target the logo section. So what we have to do is logo hyphen hyphen section. And this class name references what we have right here. Okay, it contains uh, the logo name and then the image and then the name of of Jack. So, like so, like so. All right. So that is what we're gonna do right now. So to actually accomplish that, we are going to set the mean height to be 32 viewport height, and width will be 100 percent. All right, so display flex justify content in the center, align items will also be center, and then the flex direction will be color. Then let's set the background to to black, uh, black like so, and then the color will be white. The color will be white. Let's check it out. And this is what we got so far, all right? So to actually make this thing visible, uh, the uh, the sound uh, design that we made right here at the icon, we'll have to set the Z index to two. So let's, throw, let's scroll up, scroll up, and then we set the Z index rather to two, okay? So now this thing will be visible. It should be visible. Well, let's continue with our our styling. I probably didn't add it uh, in the appropriate place, so let's let me copy it out and let me add it to the header. All right, we need to add it to the header because the header contains uh, the icon, the BTN icons, and then the stuff. All right, so if we check back, and now we can see the two icons. Uh, the icons and then the sound that we just created so the next thing that we have to do let's continue with our styling now we have to target the logo itself all right we have to target the logo and then we set the display to grid uh, place items in the center in the center and then the text decoration text decoration will be not all right Let's check it out. And now you can see how nicely we aligned this uh, this name and then the text. So what we have to do now is to target the image itself. So we say logo and then the IMG that is inside the div. We want to set the width of the logo to be 45 pixel. 45 five pixel like so. And then the height will be auto. Okay. The text as well as the logo and then the span which which is the span test inside the class of logo here is it so you have the sorry you have the logo okay and then the span test inside this logo that's where we want to start so we set the font size 
so about 1.7 1. 1. rem and then we add the color of uh, of white okay so the next expand text right after this which is this you also want to target it and, say, and give it some value so to do that you want to say the logo section which is directly inside the section and then we want to say the next span text after the first uh after the first span that's what really we want to target then we give it a margin top of about uh 25 pixel okay the font size in the jeff pixel and then you said the font family the font family will be uh times new roma times new roma roma and then we have times this is just the name of the times and then so this is just the name of the of the generic name of the font family that we want to see if i show you what we got so far this is what we got so far corresponding to what we have right here so right here okay so it might not actually look exactly the same way so we just want to build this website as similar as as a, it is so as to basically understand how the design is made and there all right so what we have to do now is to uh, style our nav link okay so what we have to do now is to add comment here now section starts here okay so right after this we want to target the nav links okay so what we have to do now is to say nav and then the links since they are they are all anchor tag so we want to add some value so the first thing i want to is display all the icons as block element So the text align, text align will be center, all right. The line height will be three rem, like so. And then we set the text decoration as none, okay. And then the color will be this uh, color right there, nine zero nine zero nine six, like so. And let's check what we've done so far. And this is what we got so far, all right. This is what we will got so far. So what we have to do next is to you know change the color when we override. So what we're gonna do is nav links and then the a icon, a the aqua tag with over effect is pseudo class, and then wanna have the color this color. So whenever we over over this i and this nav links, we are going to change the color corresponding to our uh, how it is right here okay so what we have to do now is to add this uh, horizontal line on top of this uh, icon so to do that let's target our nav links and then the icon tag then we'll use uh, this pseudo class of before so the first thing we want to do is to set the content to empty the width will be 100% the height it will be one pixel and then the position will be absolute All right and then we set the left to zero then the background will be this uh, the background with this color 2d 2d 2e e, like so 2d 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 2e okay let's check it out and this is what we got so far very nice all right very very nice very well so the next thing that we really want to do now is to style these icons all right so what we have to do now is to purchase the social icons okay so Let's grab the class name and social icons like so. And then we want to set the list style 
to the now the display the reflex okay and then we set the margin bottom the margin bottom will be 30 pixel all right 30 pixel let's see what we got so far and this is what we got so far so now we have to target the list we have the social icons and then the li okay we want to set the width of each icon to about 30 pixel and then the font size will be one word okay let's check it out you see what we got right here corresponding to what we got right here you can realize that it's actually just no big difference in what we have here and what we have right here okay but if you actually look at it very well we still have some uh some changes that is applied to it so the next thing we want to do now is to target the icon type inside the airline so do that let's target our social icons the airline and then the anchor tag and then we want to set the text decoration to none we want to set the we want to set the color to to this particular color maybe zero nine zero nine six okay so right after that we want to change the color on over so social icons li then the echo tag so when we over over it we want to change the color to this particular color so now let's check it out i realize that uh, we have this nice over effect on this button right here and then the original uh site that we're creating also has the same uh, color which is very very cool so the next thing that we should do right now is probably close this nav bar and start adding uh, start adding this text right here so to do that i'm just going to head over to uh my aside class and then i'll set the height to zero and then the overflow the overflow will be hidden okay the overflow will be hidden so right after that let's check it out you can see that uh, we don't see anything anymore and later on we're going to add our javascript functionality so when we toggle on this icon we are going to display the the, the nav bar all right so the reason why the overflow is set to hidden is because if we set the height to zero and then we didn't set the overflow we are still going to be seeing the links all right the links will still be visible even though the height is set to zero but since the height is zero then we have to hide all these items by you know setting the overflow to to hidden okay so that way all these things will not be visible so now what we really have to do next is by you know let me write some comment here now for ends here okay so now we are going to write some uh, html text and add some text and then start them. so when we are done with that we are going to start adding our javascript functionality so what we have to do next like i said we're gonna have right after this aside let us add some comment we have uh, text zone which is uh, section section one so now we are going to create a id of section section home all right so in here we're still gonna add another another class of uh, class oh my god we're gonna have another class of uh, section i think home and inside this uh, section it should be section that did my bad section we should have to use a semantic html all right so inside this section we are going to have a uh, a div with uh, a class of text zone text zone like so so inside this text zone we have our h1 
which is uh, I, like so. And then we have this uh, this tag, the break tag. And then we have our text, like I am. Um, and then we'll have to add the image, okay? We'll have to add the image. And then the image is uh, the image. Sorry, ID. And then we have images. And then the logo and PNG, okay? Logo that PNG. And right after this, uh, we are going to set the width. The width will be 53. And then the height, the height will be 72. Okay, the height will be 72. And then we we'll just give it an alternative name of Jack, since that is the name of the of the developer. And then we have this name right here. So immediately after the image, we are going to add the text. Let me show you. So the immediately after this image. As you can see, this is an image. So we are going to add this text, and right after that, we will add this uh, web developer. So to do that. We are going to add another break, break tag, and we will write web developer, web developer, web developer like so. So right after that, right after this. This H1, we're gonna have a P tag, a P tag with the class of uh, of uh, gray text. Okay, so gray text, and then we set the value to be front and uh, developer, developer like so. And then we have uh, WordPress export corresponding to what it has right here. Okay, front end developer and WordPress export. So the next thing that we have to do is to actually create the the button. So do that. Let's add some break tag here, and then right inside here we're going to have a hanker tag okay and then let's put a dead link right here we're gonna name the class so the contact button okay contact button and right after this contact button we're gonna have a div let me scroll up a little we're gonna have a div let me indent this thing very well all right nice that way so inside this div, we're going to add a span with a class of uh, BJ. And mind you, this is the button that we really want to create, this nice over button. So this is the same thing that we're going to create right here. So this is what we got so far. So right after that, we're going to create empty span and then another empty span with the class of uh, for the class of base and then we are going to put the dot empty span for the class of text no this thing is gonna have some value like a text in it which is uh contact contact me contact me like so okay so right after that so right after this div we are going to have our scroll down animation this animation right here okay the animation that is going up and down which is scrolled down this is what we're going to create next so to do that we're going to have a class of uh, scroll down scroll down like so so inside this div we're going to have a span uh, we're going to have a span with the uh, the text of scroll scroll down let's make it a lowercase letter 
scroll down and right after we're gonna have our icon which is i.fes.fe i think uh arrow arrow down all right so what we have to do is to copy the whole thing okay and then copy the whole thing and then paste it again right here so now we have two different uh it is same thing okay you just have to make sure that this thing, one is arrow arrow down all right the same thing arrow down okay so after creating this section right here now it is time that we begin styling them okay so the first thing that we're gonna do is actually targeting this section so do that let's start with the section on section on and we are going to set the mean height of the section to about uh, 100 viewport height display with the flex and align items align items in the center okay and we're gonna have some padding left padding left about 1.5 red okay so let's check it out so this is what we got so far all right this is what we got so far and the next thing that we're gonna do is by you know make sure that we properly align all this so we have to target the class name uh one after the other so the next thing that we're gonna do now is to target the text the text zone text text zone okay and then the h1 tag that is inside it we want to set the font size of the text to so about uh three rem uh, let me increase it a little 3.2 rem okay so the color is already white so we're gonna set the the line height to about uh, 50 pixel 50 pixel and then the letter spacing before i set the letter spacing let me actually show you something right here so this is the text actually and to properly align this let us set let us comment out this uh, scroll scroll down uh section so let's check it out once again so you can see that uh, there are a lot of space and in, in the middle of this test right here so likewise this you know there aren't much space in between the, the letters so in here what we have to do now is to set the letter spacing and give it a negative value of uh, minus three pixel like so so if you actually check it back right here you realize that uh, we actually have uh, almost the same value that has been set to this uh, right here so the next thing that we're going to do is to actually change the size of this image okay so we'll go back to our html we will get rid of this uh, of the size that we give it okay and then we'll come back to our species and what we have to do now is to actually uh, locate the image and then we set the text down and then we want to set the image that is inside this div we want to set the width the width to about 30 pixel and then we want to set the height to the arrow so if you go back to it you're going to realize that this thing is very very well aligned right now just like what we have right here okay so we could probably increase the height uh the width of this or we could probably set the height as 40 pixel so as to see the value that we get and it's not that bad okay but we could probably increase it more then we have to set the width again to about 35 pixel so as to make sure that it's well aligned and now it's a little bit good okay so now we can continue with with uh styling our our elements so the next one we don't want to style is the p tag inside this uh 
inside this class name inside this class name the p tag that is inside this class uh, inside this div of course so which is this one right here so i'm gonna set let's target this like great text and then i want to set the margin top margin top to about 30 pixel and then the color will be a2 a2 a3 like so and what we have to do next now is that uh, we're gonna set the letter spacing as well the letter spacing to about 3 pixel and then the font size will be 14 pixel then the position will be ready to okay so now let's check it out let's see what we got so far so this is what we got so far all right this is what we got so far so what i really want to do now is that i want to get rid of this uh capitalized letter in our html so let's go back to it and let's get rid of this capital and give it a small letter all right so now after that after we have said this now we want to style our contact button so exactly as it is we want to style the contact button and then after that we're gonna add this uh, animation before we, fetch, if, uh, we finally add our javascript functionality okay so now to do that let's go back to our style sheet and let's write some comments here contact link button okay so do that let's type the class name and let's call it contact button so inside this contact button we're gonna have a bunch of different different uh declarations right here so the first thing that we're gonna have is create some margin top from the top 50 pixel from the top zero from left and right and zero from button and right after that you're gonna set the text decoration to be none okay so the width of the of the uh, contact me button we span across and take 100 percent of width and then the max width is gonna be 190 pixel okay the max width will be 190 pixel uh, let's actually make it 200 pixel okay so we have the height the height is uh, 50 pixel let me actually make it 40 pixel we have the display the block display with the block the line height will be uh, 40 pixel as well so that uh, the text will actually be in the middle of the of the button and then we have uh, later spacing it's going to be 3 pixel and then the position is going to be relative right let's actually set the uh, okay let's keep it that way and the next thing that we have to do we have to target the contact button and then the div inside the class name so if you don't know what i'm talking about that uh, declaration references what we have right here the div inside this contact button so this is what we're gonna start and the value that we're gonna give is give it a position of relative the width will also be 100 percent because there is another element inside an element and then we're gonna set the height of this as 100 percent as well the overflow will be hidden the overflow will be hidden all right and then we want to set the, the transition transition of all point three seconds is in out point is in out so you won't see much of things right now because we still have uh, some elements to style like the the bj the base and then the text as well so with that being said let's continue by targeting different elements inside there 
so now we have the span and then the bg the first empty span that we created with class of bg and then we want to set the position to be to be relative and then the width will also be 100 percent because it is another element inside this element and then want to set the height as well to 100 percent then the overflow the over no no i am actually doing something else so the bj the width is going to be 100 percent of course the height will also be 100 percent and the position will be absolute the position will be absolute and then you have the, the left property the left property will be minus five pixel okay and then the top will be zero top will be zero now we have to set the animation as well so i mean transition i'm gonna set the transition to all point uh, three seconds easy now of course you're still you're still going not to see big difference right now because we still have some things to start so the next thing that we're going to do now is to actually target the span okay we want to target the span so we say contact button and then span the base i mean the base we're going to target the base and then we set the the width the width to one ten percent okay so actually span the base we're gonna set the width to 100 percent my bad 100 percent and then the position will be absolute all right the left will also be zero and then the border will be one pixel one pixel solid and then this color okay so the box sizing will also be border box the box sizing will be uh border box all right and then the position will be absolute like we have specified it right here and let's check it out see what we got so far it will go so far and now what we have to do now is to set the height the height will also be the height will also be 100 percent so as to see what we're talking about so now this is what we have right so far this is what we have so far and what we have to do now is to make sure that the test is well aligned so to properly align our test let me actually minimize this let me minimize this and bring it over here so as for you to see it very well this is what i should have done since the beginning but i'm very sorry so let's go back to our contact button and let's set the text align to the center and now this is properly centered okay so the next thing that we're going to do right now is that uh, whenever we over over this whenever we over over this contact button we want the uh the span base to uh have some kind of background you know so whenever we over over the uh contact button contact button we want the span bj not the span base rather we want the span dot bj uh to take the width of uh, more than 10 percent so actually we're going to set the width of this to zero all right and the background the background of this will be this color this color right here so whenever we over over this you can see how nicely we add this uh cool animation background okay so the next thing that we're going to do now is to add some uh some property like the transform property so let's add transform and we add a skew skew x okay 
should be minus uh, 19 degree like so so now if you over it you can see how nicely uh, the animation uh, happened so the next thing that we're going to start right now is that we're going to target the span the text okay so do that let's target the contact button then we have the span the text and this one particular reference is what we have right here so it is the uh, span that contains the text so this is what we're going to start so the first thing i want to do is that i want to set the position to absolute i want to set the width as well to 100 percent because it's another uh, element inside the main element and we have the height as well to the other person okay so the top will be zero and then the left as well the left as well will be zero and then we wanna we wanna change the color okay the text decoration should be should be none of course the color we're supposed to add the color the color of the text will be this like so and now what we really want to do now is that whenever we we hover over this contact button okay we want the span text span the text to want to change the color of this span that so the color that we want to have is uh, this particular color one D one D one D like so so whenever you hover over this button you can see how nicely we have this over effect which is the same which is the same uh way just a guess not uh as added its own uh its own uh contact button right here so you add the, the contact button is so cool so as to you know you could actually add it in your own project as well so as to make your own website to be beautiful as this okay so the next thing that we're going to do now is to add this uh, scroll animation text that is going up and down so the first thing that we're going to do now is to uncomment this okay you're going to uncomment this and you probably see the text right here and the first thing that we're going to do now is that uh, we're going to call on the class name scroll down so right after that we're going to set the position the position to be absolute okay the position will be absolute and then the right will be 30 pixel bottom should be 3.3 rem okay so i'm gonna set the display as a uh, as flex display is the flex we have uh, flex direction flex direction will be will be column will be column and then we have uh, align items to be centered we have uh, transform transform we have rotate we have 90 degree 90 degree 90 degree the display will be block we forgot to actually justify the content to, to the center justify the content center okay so what we have to do now is that uh, we're gonna set the font size to about uh, 14 pixel so right now i want to uh direct this uh, first uh scroll down to the left side right here so what we have to do is to add another class name to this so we'll call this uh scroll 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 down hyphen hyphen left like so okay scroll down hyphen hyphen left so we can copy this can copy this right here and add uh, some style into it and 
no CSR. So do that. Let's target this, and we are going to set uh, the left property. Then we just set the left property to minus thirty pixel, and we are still going to set the right to auto. Okay. Now you can see how nicely if I uh, aligned this thing to the left hand side right here. And what we really want to do now is that uh, we want to target the span inside it. Okay, we want to target, scroll down and then the span inside the div, and then we want to set the display to be a line block. Okay, display will be a line block, and by setting the display to a line block, we will. Uh, be able to add our uh, animation to the text itself okay so the next thing that i want to do is to add the animation and the animation name will be scroll it's going to be the duration will be 0.5 seconds the timing function will be linear and then the infinite then we have alternate reverse so it will go from front to back all right so what we have to do now is probably add the at keyframes rule but before that we are going to uh we are going to make sure that we change the direction of these uh icons okay we're gonna change the direction of this icon so to do that we're gonna we're gonna call on the class name of scroll plus the icons okay so we set the transform to rotate and it's going to have the value of uh, 270 degree okay 270 degree we have the margin left the margin left will be 10 pixel so like i said what i really want to do now is to add the animation on this text right here so to do that let's target it by using our add keyframes and then we we'll use uh, the name of the animation and then we have our curly bracket so what we don't want to do now is that we want to set at zero percent we want this to transform all right and translate 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 x and the value will be minus seven pixel okay so at hundred percent at hundred percent it's going to transform let me just copy it and then paste it right here like so and then the value is the same so okay so now you can see how nicely the animation is is being done corresponding to how it is right here so what we might want to do now is to properly uh, properly align this uh, second item right here I maybe mean second scroll so a scroll up and then let's set the right to about the uh, 50 okay as to negative value of minus 30 too much 20 and here it is okay so the next thing right now is to add the functionality so that uh, the whenever we talk on this icon we will uh, nicely display our nafa so the first thing that we're gonna do by coming to this side and add link our HTML script to our JavaScript so do that let's write script uh, let's write script and S src and then we want to link up our JavaScript from HTML to our index.js so one of the things that we're gonna be doing right now is that uh, we are gonna select a couple of things some things that we're going to be selecting is uh, we're going to select this uh, we're going to select the sound this icon we're going to select this icon we're going to select uh, this on and off uh, text right here we're going to select our btns icons as well mm -hmm. i'm still going to select the uh, sidebar okay so these are a bunch we're going to have a bunch of query selectors 
and before we actually start selecting all of them i just really want to show you that these are the things that we are going to be selecting to hide our functionality so the first thing that we are going to select is uh, the sound cloud uh, the sound cloud and it's going to be const sound sound cloud like so Discuss the document document <coughs> that query selector and in here I'm just gonna pass in the class name we have sound sound cloud like so sound cloud like so and the next thing that we're gonna select is the of uh, class which is goes to document that query selector and then it's just gonna look for the class name which is uh, the id rather the id of of and mind you this correspond to what we have right here okay the id of of and we're still gonna select the id of on so do that let's go back to it let's copy it and then let's paste it one more time let's change the variable name to on and then we're passing on right here so the next thing that we're going to select is the audio itself okay the music so let's go for cost my audio is equals to document that query selector query selector and then the name of the id is uh we have uh, my my audio my audio or oh, my audio upon the spot all right so so the next thing that we're going to do now is to add an event listener to these two variables right here okay we're gonna hide event listener so to do that let's call on the first variable name which is of dot add event listener event event listener and of course we want to be leaving to click event click event and then we're gonna go for this uh, auto function and then we're gonna give it a name like a an argument or something like that so we're gonna call it soundtrack all right so in here we're gonna pass in the value of uh, of all right so we just keep on going let's copy it one, one more time and then right here let's do the same thing you know what let me enlarge everything so you can see it very well and now we have to change this variable name to on and then we'll say <coughs> on that add event listener we add a click event and then we'll go for our function and then the parameter in here we have uh, our own okay so now what we want to do is that uh, we want to create another uh, function another variable function so to do that I'm gonna say const and then the name soundtrack that we, we created right here okay soundtrack and now we're gonna say is equals to this uh this argument sound state sound state okay so we're gonna go for our auto function as usual and then we have our curly bracket so what we're gonna do now is that we want to say if sound state is equals to the parameter that is passed in here they want to do something so what we want to do we want to remove or add a particular thing so let's showcase what, we, what i'm trying to say so now we want to say if a sound state 
right the sound state is equals to uh, the parameter that is passed in here okay or let's say argument or whatever so if it is equals to this then we want to do something so what we want to do we want to we want to add let me minimize it so that you can you can see what i'm talking about very well so whenever we click on this on this icon right here okay we want to dis we want to set the display of this to none and then set the display of uh, on of uh, on to block for example now we have two uh two values right here we have the on and the off by default the on is not displayed until you click on off okay so when i click on off i want to set this off to none and then display the on to block so do that i would say i will call on the class name of i mean the variable name of on and i will say use this style property and then the display 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 should be equals to block all right so after that i want to set the off to none so do that but style display will be will be equals to and then equals to none so now if i click on this you will see that uh, it should display as none or off Uh, I'm trying it's not working okay what's going on oh I misspelled a uh, document badly so let's change it document like so so make sure that you know you uh, you find where the error is so as for you to get the, the right answer so when you click on this you know we can nicely switch uh, from off to on okay can switch from off to on and we are gonna add the functionality whereby whenever we click on on it's going to go back to the <coughs> it's going to switch back to off and then we're gonna add the music and we are still gonna add uh, the color to this uh, icon right here okay so this is what we want to do right now so since let's take it back to off so what we want to do now is to call on the sound cloud the the cloud i mean the, this uh the sound cloud this uh, uh, icon right here okay we want to call on this and then we want to change the color whenever we whenever we toggle on the on or off icon okay so to do that we're gonna say sound cloud sound cloud uh oh okay let's change the value sound cloud sound cloud let's write it very well and then we want to change the style property and then we want to set the, the color okay we want to set the color to this color right here we have uh, f50057 okay so whenever we click on this sound cloud let's see Whenever we click on this, we want to change the color of this icon as well. Okay, so we have to know what's going on. Let's style that color. The default color that we applied is, uh, is already the same color that uh, this thing has. So let's change the color right here and let's set it to another value at 08. 08 F dg8 all right so let's use the color right here so whenever we toggle on this you should realize that the color of this icon has changed as well okay so the next thing i want to do now is that uh, whenever we toggle on this button whenever we toggle on this button we want to play the music so to do that we have our music right here so let's copy it let's copy it and then let's paste it right here and then we want to say this music should watch should play so we're gonna use this 
this uh, this function to play our music. So when I click on this now, so to do that, we're gonna grab all this like so. Let's copy it, then let's paste it right here. Okay, so instead of if, we're gonna add our s if statement. And now we would, we would say if sound is equals to on, like so. Then we wanna change the display block to none. And then we'll set the display property of on to block. Okay, and now we have to change the color as well. Let's change the color back to its default position. So it should be F5, 500, like so. And then instead of the function play, we're gonna set it to plus. Okay, so now whenever we click on this, whenever you switch it back to its default position, it's going to change. First functionality that uh, we have added in the music functionality. Functionality. So now the next thing that I want to do now is to add functionality to our double button right here. So whenever we click on this, we are going to set the. We are going to display the navbar. So the first thing that we have to do is to go back to our CSS and I scroll up, I scroll up to the sidebar section. I scroll up and and here we would realize that uh, we set the display the height to zero. If we change the height back to hundred percent, hundred percent, and then the the over we remove the overflow. Now you realize that uh, we have our navbar. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is that uh, we're gonna hide it like so. We're still gonna hide it and set the zero property to to none. Okay. So now what we are going to do is to add a class name right here, and then we'll call the class name show now okay show now and here whenever we toggle on this we want to add this class name and what is going to be in this class name in this uh in this code block right here we're going to add the height of the aside to the 100 percent and then we're going to set the overflow the overflow will be visible okay will be visible and mind you currently let me show you currently we have 100 percent right here but we can still see the you know the what is behind our navbar okay so we have to add our background color the background color and then i'll go for one nine one nine one nine all right like so and fortunately we've already added our z index of two so that uh, it's going to come up you understand so now all we have to do now is to set the aside back to zero back to zero like so and then the overflow will be hidden okay so now what we have to do is to go back to our in um, javascript and what we're gonna select is that uh, we're gonna select three things so the first thing that we're going to select is uh this uh this icon the two icons the uh, hamburger menu icon and then the the second icon which we set the display property to, to now okay so we're gonna select the two icon and then the third the third thing that we're gonna select is the sidebar the side itself okay so these are the three things that we're gonna select so to get started let's go back to our javascript and now let's have our query selector now I'm gonna call it BTN 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 browse like so which is equals to document dot query selector and now we have our our browse that is the alternative class name that we gave to our icon and right after that let's 
have another 15 icon 15 times equals to document dot query selector query selector and now we're gonna select the, the times okay the second icon now the third one I'm gonna select is the aside so go for uh, side nav side nav which is equals to a document dot query selector and now we're gonna have our aside all right so what we're gonna do we're gonna take the same process of this so that we we, we have uh, the functionality of our of our toggle navbar okay so what we have to do now is to select on the btn btn bars all right copy it and let's paste it right here i want to add event listener okay so we want to be leading to click event and of course we want to have our auto function and then we're going to pass in a parameter right here so i'll call it my font and i would say i'll pass in an argument of open right here open okay so we're going to copy the whole thing all right we're going to copy it and all we have to do now is to paste it right here let's paste it and let's change the open let's change it to to close and this btn bars we're going to change it to uh btn times all right so now we can add our functionality let me enlarge it so that we'll be able to say very well and now we would say we create our const like i said we are going to follow the same procedure right here okay so we follow the same procedure so we we'll have our const and then we'll name it my funk which is equals to then we'll pass in our our parameter which is uh which is going to be nav condition nav condition and then we have our arrow function and then the curly bracket so what we want to do now is that we want to check okay we want to check if the if the nav condition is equals to open okay if the nav condition is equals to open and if that is the case we want to add some functionality okay so now let's begin we want to say if statement we want to say if uh, nav condition is equals to is equals to open open of course we, we want the side nav and then we want to add a particular class list set that that add okay should be equals to show now the class that we just created in our in our in our css show now okay so what we want to do now is that whenever we toggle on this uh, icon we want to set the display property of these times to block and set the display property of this to none okay so you're gonna realize what i'm talking about right now so do that let's call on our btn times and then we want to set this style style dot display to what to none it gets it so right after that we want to set btn btn bars dot style dot display i want to set it to now this one should be block the btn time should be block and then we have our btn bar should be displayed as not well. so now let's check it out let's see what we've got so far and now if we toggle on this we realize that uh, we nicely open our our navbar but if you click on this right now it's not functioning and that is because we have not added the second as if statement so let's grab all this and let's paste it right here and in here we're gonna have our as if statement and we're gonna say if uh as if we have condition okay as if not condition is equals to open if it is already open okay so we want to remove the class name okay 
we want to remove remove the class name show nav and then we set the display the display of this to, to none and set the this back to to block all right so now if we toggle on our icon we realize that uh, we nicely open the navbar and whenever we click on it oh let's change the name to close close and now if you toggle on it and then close it we realize that it's functioning very well corresponding to how just said just now also has the sun right here um still not the the same thing but we are close okay so the the challenge in this uh in this uh in this tutorial is that uh, we should create a similar project uh as this not exactly as it looks like similar to it and it's very very similar and i think we are going for the right way so the next thing that we're going to do now is to you know let me enlarge this we are going to do the media query for the big bigger screens so that uh, our nav bar will be on the right uh, side of our of our window okay so to do that we're gonna have our media query right now and this is what we currently have in in uh on bigger screen this is how it looks like so what we have to do now is to enlarge everything when it gets to bigger screen okay so let's go back to our our CSS and let's scroll scroll all the way to the bottom all the way to the bottom and now we're gonna have our media query section for bigger screens bigger screens okay so all we have to do now is to add keyframe tool identifier and now oh at the media query rather right we have our media query media query scan and we have our our main width main width so it's going to be around uh 950 pixel like so so 950 pixel so the first thing that we're going to do now is that uh, we are going to call on the so we are going to call on the on our header okay on our header right here the header and we are going to add a specific functionality for example as you can see it right here we have put the navbar and then the icon right here and now we want to uh, display this as mon on bigger screens and then this one we are going to uh, align it to the uh, right side right here like so on bigger screens you can see that the icon is not displayed and then this one is placed right to the right hand side so this is what we're gonna do right now so do that we're gonna call on our header header okay and then i'm gonna set the justify content to to flex end okay so after that we're gonna set the btns the btn i btn container btn's containers we want to set the display property to none when it gets the biggest one because we will have our sidebar right right here so this is the icon and we can talk it on and off and then we're gonna have our sidebar right here okay so the next thing that we're gonna do right now is that uh, we're gonna call on our aside nav we have a side nav in here we will set the width the width to about 10 pixel instead of taking the whole width okay and then we're gonna set the height to 100 percent okay that is what we're gonna do that is what we want to do and now if you go back you realize that uh, our now our nav bar is now by the side right here and the next thing that we're going to do now is to target the test itself so that we create some space between the the right the left side here and the and look at how nicely it is right here so this is the same thing that we're going to do and and then we're going to increase the font size and all that stuff so the next thing that we're going to do now is that uh, if you realize that if you realize that these icons are already 
placed next to the nav links and in here it is far away uh, far away where the icons are so the next thing we're going to do now is to make sure that we shift this thing up a little and to do that we have our class of uh, we have our class of a side wrapper and instead of taking the whole height of 100% we're going to reduce it so all we want to do now is to a side wrapper and then we want to set the height to about let me say 75% and with that alone you can see that uh, the icon is shifted to, to shift it up a little and I think 75 is too much it's too small now let's make it 80 okay so 80 and this one is a lot better so the next thing I'm gonna do now is to make sure we align this icon properly so as to make sure that it fits what we have right here okay and if and let's let's do that let's do that so all we have to do now is to come on the logo section okay the logo section and we want to set the height of the logo to about 25 the height to about 25 vh and that is basically all and then the image will have to uh, adjust the image as well so we would say logo and then the ing inside inside our logo we will set the width to about 50 pixel and then the height the height will be auto okay so now let's check it out and let's see what we got so far and this is what we got so far and i think this one is too is too big so let's reduce it a little we're going to reduce it a little and let's make it about uh, the main height the main height should be 25 it should not height a lot okay now let's go back to it and it's a lot but it's a lot better okay so all we have to do next now is that uh, we are going to call on our social icons the social icons and then we will set the width no we set the margin the margin that we have on top to about uh, zero the margin bottom that we added on smaller screens we're going to set it back to zero and we're still going to call on the list item inside it and set the text align to center and now we have to increase the font size to about one rep all right so now if you check it out now we nicely have our nav side nav like so exactly or closely how it is right here so what we have to do now is to increase all the test that uh, we have and then to do that the first thing that we're going to do is to call on the section this uh, section of home this section of home okay this section of home we're gonna call on this let's copy let's come back to our media query we have let me have the comment home section like so and now all we have to do is to have the class name right here and we set the padding left we set the padding left to about 30 rem Ethereum RAM like so now let's check it out section on okay yeah padding padding left my bad okay oh why is it not working we have section on Oh, I could remember that uh, it is the ID that we styled in the first place, not the class. Okay, so all we have to do now is to change the, the uh, selector, this class selector, back to ID. And now, if we go back to our browser, and now you realize that uh, we've shifted, we created some space between the text and then the navbar. Okay, so all we have to do now is to make sure that we increase the text and let's do that so 
we'll call on the text zone and then the h1 that we created from the beginning and we want to set the font size to about 6.3 rem like so and then the line height will increase as well will be around 85 pixel and the letter spacing the letter spacing will be minus 6 pixel like so so now if we check it out realize that we have uh, a bigger a bigger test here right here okay so the next now we're gonna do like this let's keep on styling them okay let's keep on styling them first to add all the functionality so we have our image we have text zone and then the img so the width will be 50 pixel and then we will select the grid test we have the text zone then the grid test we have to increase the font size as well font size should be should be one rem okay and let's check it out see what we got so far and this is what we got so far okay this is what we got so far and then the next thing i'm going to do now is to make sure that uh, the second scroll down animation comes to uh this side right here so do that let's target it as well and i'll call on scroll down and then i'll set the right right property to about uh, minus 30 30 pixel the bottom should be the bottom should be 3.3 rem let's check it out and let's add the second functionality so we're gonna call the scroll down and then the left we have left should be about 110 pixel and then right should be out okay let's check it out and let's see what we got and here this is what we got so far okay this is what we got so far and it looks very 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 cool and you know the next functionality that i want to add is the is this uh, h1 and p right after the test content which makes it very very cool and uh let's try to add some okay let's try to add some and let me have some comment here this is the end and of uh, section on so what we have to do now is to scroll scroll to the top scroll to the top and right after uh the h1 the text on h1 and then the the paragraph test we are going to add our zero class okay so we're going to add our zero class to do that let's call on the text zone and we have our h1 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 and here let's set the position position to be relative and in here we're gonna add the pseudo class of before okay so we have our content should be uh this h1 tag okay and then the position should be absolute we have uh, the top property should be minus 80 pixel okay minus 80 pixel and then the left the left property as well should be around minus 10 pixel the font size the font size should be 1.2 to rem like so and let's set the font family to this la label or and it is cursive all right so the color will be this color right here six 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 five six five yeah this color okay so now let's check it out let's see what we got so far 
and this is it so we, what we have to do now is to make sure that we add a letter spacing for about three pixels so as to be able to see the text very well and here it is okay here is the text and what we have to do now is to copy it copy everything and change the value to after the pseudo class to after change the content to this position will be absolute the top and the left property will also change okay it will change and we are going to set the values to we are going to set the values to the top is going to be it's going to change to bottom okay we're going to change to bottom and then the value will be minus 10 minus 10 like so and then the left also to be changed to right and we're gonna set this to about uh, 40 pixel and then the font size will be about uh, the same thing and then the font family the color and then the letter spacing so let's check it out let's see how we got so far and this is what we got so far and you really want to make sure that uh, we do it exactly the same way it did this on so let's make sure that uh, we we increase this to about uh, 70 70 and now we have it there. it doesn't really uh match what it has here but at least we have the idea of how you want the website to be okay which is very 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 cool and now we nicely clone the just a just now portfolio website and this is going to be the part one if you don't really want to miss out how the rest of the uh the, the design will be make sure that you hit the subscribe button so i don't miss out anything so with that said i'll see you in the next tutorial